So the next scene, which isn't really a scene, it's wine glass washing time after dinner, a routine that is familiar around these parts. And uh, the conversation between Luke and June goes super well. This is a this is a time where I feel like June may have been minimizing um, Emily's experience with the aunt or maybe the other experiences of uh, the other women because she says, how bad could she be? Aunt Lydia set a high fucking bar. And Luke, again, goes back to that boundary crossing. Well, if Emily wanted you to know, she would have just told you, right? Like, I, all right, Luke, I get it. But passive aggressiveness is not going to fly with her. Just be fucking direct. She had enough passive aggressiveness with Serena. Just be direct, Luke. And um, that's where we find out that Luke did his own boundary crossing because he told Twello about June's lake house story. And June is pissed. And I don't blame her. And I understand, I do understand why he told Twello, because it is his daughter, and this is information that he wants this guy to have because it may be helpful. But June sees it as, uh, that was my story to tell, and I didn't get that far in the story, mm-hmm. and you just went ahead and did it for me. Yeah. So, I mean, hypocritical of June to be pissed off about this, um, but I do understand yeah. why she was upset. I oh, yeah. I just like bottom line like this is one of those things like the victim should be allowed to tell their story. Right. Unless the victim isn't around to tell their story, you allow the victim to tell their story in their own way in their own time. Right. And it's I we haven't really seen June say a lot of it and we do, certainly are going to watch her do a lot more name dropping in her testimony, but at the same time I feel like it's another highlight of the fact that Luke and her are very out of touch with their, at least each other's experiences, or he's out of touch with her experience, because she has had to operate under this very stealth and underground network for so long. Like, this information, for me, is a lot of the things she's saying are not necessarily things that she wants out or wants in Twello's hands. Like I was saying before, I don't know if I trust him to, like, have all of this information. So, and... We know that she's at least still thinking about Nick. When she had that moment with Nicole, she acknowledged Nick, acknowledged that he's the one that got her there. And, or maybe that was just me putting my own thoughts into that scene. I don't think she actually acknowledged that part of it. Um, But, you know, she's, he's at least on her mind. And a lot of that information could get people, specifically Nick, in a lot of trouble. And for Luke to be like offering it up again, I understand why he went to it and probably didn't think anything of it. But in June, it's just another red flag for June of like, she can't trust him. She can't, he doesn't understand her. She's alone in her experiences once again. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I can definitely see where you two are coming from with that. Um, Cause, but shocker, different point of view. Um, When I saw, or when I read this, or uh, when I saw this, um, June was very annoyed at Luke for bringing up the uh, the lake house to Twello. Um, and hearing you two talk about it, I'm willing to shift my perspective. But my original perspective was that perhaps, like, Luke was just trying to give as much information to Twello as possible about finding his daughter. But also perhaps he just – it wouldn't occur to him that this would be sensitive information because June hasn't expressed to him that this is yeah. sensitive information. Information right. because she hasn't talked about any of her experiences with Gilead any time that anything is brought up she just completely shuts down that portion of the conversation um and also I'm going to venture a guess that Luke meant no disrespect for um uh, for the uh, for disclosing the information to Twello I'm sure it was done completely innocently because we have seen like in the last episode we saw Luke be so extremely respectful of her boundaries giving her the space that she needed in the bathroom sleeping on the couch like like being respectful of just like her boundaries regarding touch and like any other sort of emotional boundary that she seems to have in play so I was a bit more sympathetic to Luke in this regard because there like for him it was I don't think that there was any ill intent there and he wasn't trying to like go around her or anything like that because Mm -hmm. how could he know what the boundary is when she's not expressing what the boundary is because she's not communicating with him at all. So I understand why she would be so mad at, uh, annoyed at him because it is her story to tell and being the, uh, being the, uh, the victim, we should always allow the victim to tell the story in their own time. I just don't think that like for him, like to, For her to be so harsh to him and so cold to him, I don't think is understanding that, like, 
he has been so patient with her with I with I all these boundaries and there was no ill intent meant there. Does that I agree with you there. I do. Yeah. I don't think that he thought he was doing anything wrong. I'm sure that he thought he was being super helpful. Mm -hmm. But again, this goes back to what Marjorie was saying last episode. Holy balls. Why did we not have a team of trauma specialists on mm -hmm. that like on that dock to be like, all right, June, Luke, we're going to have some healing to do. Come with us. Like, it, it's just they really they need that. And I, you know, I don't know if any of that is happening. And that's neither, neither here nor there. But I do agree with you. If he didn't know, he didn't know. Right. And it's it actually is even highlighted in the conversation because I thought when he says, um, well, if Emily wanted you to know, she would have told you. Right. To me, I thought that was him really kind of reassuring himself like this is probably something he tells himself all the time if june wants him to know she will tell him <laughs> because she's not giving him any information she's not telling him anything about it. they they are obviously not communicating well um so i no, i completely agree with you i don't think he meant i think he was trying to do i think he tries to do the best he can through this whole episode um and that's what's so heartbreaking is that he just genuinely doesn't know what she needs and he's trying to figure it out but she's not giving him a lot to go on and also like it's kind of exhausting to me to even like hear you talk about like oh well she's not really giving him a lot of like understanding or leeway or like anything because I'm just like oh she's got so much to deal with she doesn't have to deal with Luke and yeah. his feelings right now and she doesn't have to and like that's definitely like she sh she is the victim of insane abuse and trauma and she should it's not her place or responsibility to mm -hmm. to help him through her trauma exactly um, yeah. is ultimately what it comes down I ultimately what it comes down to um I do think she feels kind of exhausted by that idea yeah I mean granted um like I said though, I'm 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 willing to grant Luke a little bit of levity though because again he's shown that he is so respectful of her boundaries and tries to do everything that he can to do what is going to be best for her in every circumstance they have so like I understand her frustration but I'm also just like he's he's trying yeah. He's trying. I agree with you completely. Hey, another thing, too, that we need to think about is in the last episode, June pretty much raped him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she absolutely I, did. She she raped him. Okay. And I just can't imagine how Luke must be feeling in this episode. She must be a complete stranger to him right now. She is. So she, no wonder that he doesn't know how to proceed or what to do because June has done her own boundary crossing with him. And he has got to be and he probably didn't know how to react because he's like, well, she she just got home. Like, and I, I just got her. I don't want to lose her again. Like, right. I mean, he's going through his own special mind fuck right now. So oh, for sure. He's not going to. People are going to make mistakes. This is man. They're going to fuck this up real good. I can feel it. Yeah, <laughs> like, I just, I, know. I feel I know. like this is the episode that was really like sending clear signs to all is not well here. Yeah. I mean, Moira does go to bat for June to a point when she walks in because she really senses that there's something super awkward going on. Um, and Luke confesses to her that he doesn't know what to do. She's like a stranger and they just talk about Hannah and then there's bed and Moira tells him like trauma sucks. It, it's it's a bumpy road. Like you got to be patient until she gets wherever it is that she's going to be. And he's like, well, you know, I would probably get this more if she'd fucking tell me <laughs> what she's been through. And then June is standing in the stairwell hearing all of this, which I'm glad that she did. Because I don't know if the ending would have happened if she didn't. I'm inclined to agree with you on that. Yeah. And like him saying that I just don't know how to, I don't know what she wants. And like hearing him get choked up and then hearing Moira, I say that like getting over trauma is a bumpy fucking road. We need to be patient until June gets where she's going. Um, you don't know what she's gone through. And Luke saying like, maybe that's the problem. It's, I think that's an accurate assertion. It's like one of the one of the key components of helping someone through their uh, through their trauma is to at least have an understanding of what they went through, so you can be empathetic towards their situation. Um, to uh, like when you're in that close of a proximity to them, like yeah. Um, but 
I have a light theory that I want to go through too, but we'll get into that once you guys have anything else that you want to say about the scene. I don't have anything else about this scene. Okay. So, um, while Moira was talking though and saying that like going through trauma is a bumpy fucking road, there were what looked like three very fuzzy lights behind her. And at first I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever lights. Um, and then I was like, hit the brakes. I was like, wait a second, Scarlet talked about light, th- or talked about light theory and mentioned that we should be looking at this. And I started to rabbit hole the way that Marjorie does. Um, and I rewound and realized that in the dinner scene, you have Emily and Moira on one side and Luke and June on the other. And there's three hanging, uh, or there's three, uh, lights that are hanging. Then behind Moira, you have those three fuzzy lights. And there's so many other circumstances where we see, three lights throughout uh, throughout this. And I think that this is like them fo- are um, just kind of subtly driving a point home of like these interactions between these, these tree, uh, the, like our core trios are so, are so important and are constantly going, we're going to have a constant focus on this. Like the, co- the relationship between Moira, June and Luke is mm-hmm. g- like going to be, a, or is obviously it's a constant, but like yeah. just something to keep an eye on. And then the, oh. uh, the, um, you also have Serena, Fred, and June, and, like, all of these interactions between these three, like, there's always a trio of people that, like, we ha- tend to have a focus on. So I kept noticing, like, lights popping up in um, in groups of three. Oh, that's cool. So I've noticed that before. Is it three circle lights? Yes. Okay. So here's the thing. So I sent you the, the screenshots, right? Yeah. Okay, that is that's what I was thinking about too because I but I thought that what they were pointing towards is the fact that like June uh, is always going to be in that Gilead box because that like the one pick was from June in the box at uh, Gilead Gitmo and she's like peering through those holes and we see them and every time they're in the goddamn kitchen though those like three circular lights mm-hmm pop up again or three circular hole like lights i don't know how to put them there obviously lights or reflections that's how we see it Mm -hmm. but um there was another episode two maybe maybe it was the last one i think where they were sitting at the kitchen table and you see those same three lights again um but just right next to their face right off in the distance so to me that that was telling me that june can't get out of that box She's she's still in it. They're all going to have it in them in some way. I love all those thoughts. That's so cool. Yeah. 